G'day everybody, this is Rock from SlingshotForum.com and welcome to my second Inkscape tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to focus on the use of circles and curves to create your slingshot. Now as you can see I've already set up my page, I've created the grid and I've drawn some basic fork tips in and started off my handle for the slingshot. Now I want to start putting the curves in between the fork cap and the finger grooves. One of the biggest benefits, certainly from my own point of view, is when using circles, you can match them to the tooling that you use. I will quite often use a 50mm hole saw to cut out the fork cap, and my spindle sander, which has a 40mm diameter, I use that for the finger grooves. So what I'm going to do first of all, is I'm going to start off with a circle tool, and just off the image somewhere, I'm going to draw a 50mm circle. When I draw this, I hold down the control and the shift key, that makes the circle start from your point of origin as well as make sure it maintains a perfect circle radius. If you look down the bottom of the screen you'll see ellipse 50 mil by 50 millimeters. Now it's moving. You can use this to make sure you've got your circle the right size. So there's my 50 millimeter circle for the fork cap. I'm now going to draw another two circles for the finger grooves. In this case I use my spindle sander to shape up those fork grooves which is 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter. So again clicking, dragging out, holding control and shift, looking at my status star down the bottom, 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter. And I'll draw two of these circles. There we go. Okay, we go back to the selection tool. I'm going to grab my 50 millimeter circle and move it there into the middle of the fork cap. I'm then going to grab my two 40 millimeter ones and move them to where the, roughly I want the finger grooves to be. And I probably need to do one for the bottom of the handle as well. So back to the circle tool, picking the midpoint, holding control and shift. There we go, there's the bottom of my handle. Back to the selection tool. Now, as you can see, that's a full circle. We don't actually want the full circle, we just want a part of the circle. So we now go to the node edit tool. When you look at a circle, you'll notice there's two squares. Don't worry about those two, but we're looking for this small circle here. If I click on that with the Node Edit tool and start dragging it around, it turns it into an arc. A couple of things to remember. If my cursor is inside the circle, it will give me an arc. If my cursor is outside the circle, it will give me a pie slice. So make sure you keep it inside. Another handy tip is hold down the Control key, and that will keep it in 5mm steps for the radius, so it makes it much easier to line up. There we go, and let go. As you can see, very, very quickly created the bottom of the handle there with a perfect 40mm, or in this case 30mm, circular radius. Let's do the same for the circle up there between the fork cap. Click on the circle with the selection tool, go to the node edit tool, find your little circle, hold down the control key, keeping the cursor inside the circle, and just move it around until it meets the other side of the fork tip and let go of the mouse button and control. As you can see very very quickly there we've created a perfect radius curve inside the forks. Now we're going to do the same now for the finger grooves. Select the circle, select the node edit tool and grab the little circular control point here. Now as you move it around you'll notice yeah, it's not giving you the full circle right now, but we'll move the bottom point around to roughly where it will join up. We'll then grab the top one and move it up as well. And what we'll do is later on is we'll drag those points out to actually meet the bottom of our curve. We'll do the same on the other side. Drag it around. Try and line it up as best we can. Drag this one around. Again, you notice here I've gone outside the circle, so it's turned into a pie slice. I need to move my cursor inside the circle. There we go and we'll line that little sucker up as best we can. And there you go. What we'll do from here is I'll click the zoom tool and I'll just draw a bounding box around that section there and we can see everything a little bit better. Go back to the node edit tool. Now at this point I like to turn the grid off otherwise you might find some issues with it trying to snap to and from. So shift and three will turn that grid off. Here I'm going to click on that line, I'm going to grab the control point and move it down. One thing you'll notice, it'll move all over the place, but if I hold down the control key, it'll snap it to a single axis. 
based on 5 degrees. So slowly move that guy down to at least that curve. And the same on the other side. Now you'll notice that a little bit of overlap there, a little bit of overlap there. We can fix that quite easily by going back to the node edit tool, clicking on our curve, and just visually dragging it till we get it to line up as best we can. Same on the other side. There we go, we've fixed up the two top sections. Now on the bottom section, a bit of a gap there, so back to the node edit tool, click on our curve, grab the control point and move it till it lines up where we want it there on the curve. We'll do the same on the other side. I'm just going to press the 5 key on the keyboard which takes me back to a page view and there we go a very very quick slingshot design using curves to make sure we've got perfect radiuses in the places that we want them. Thanks for watching.